What's up traders? It's Robert Falco here from Real Life Trading. Dan Jansen and me are bringing you another edition of the Real Life Earnings Report. Let's get into it. All right, good afternoon, Dan. How's it going? Doing all right, Dr. Falco. Glad to be back for our third edition of the Earnings Report. And uh, today, I think we have some heavy hitters. We got we got Target and Nvidia. Yeah, these are these are some big boys, some big big earnings reports out there. And uh, let's dive into it. Love it. All right, so we'll start with Target. Obviously, this massive massive gap today, uh, and it continued to run the entire day into this all time high. And uh, why was why was everyone buying Target so much? Uh, up 24.3% having the strongest company earnings uh, sales in company history. I, I think that would be pretty bullish. <laughs> yeah, they, Case closed. <laughs> they absolutely crushed it. So second quarter yeah. comp sales, 24.3%. Like you said, the strongest ever. And their digital comp sales which again, Target's not like the biggest online player, but 195% growth, that was 13.4% of Target's total comp sales growth is pretty massive. Yeah, I, I think the biggest reason this continued to just keep running, it is um, in the same sense of, I mean, almost everything has to do with coronavirus and what's open, what's closed. Everybody knew Target should be good that was one of the the larger guys walmart target those guys get to stay open small businesses have to close where are people going they're they're pushing their their purchases right to target everybody thought it was gonna be good but uh this is fantastic numbers absolutely fantastic yeah their second quarter gap eps from continuing operations of three dollars and 35 cents was 84.4 percent higher than last year and adjusted EPS was 85.7% higher than last year. So again, it's not like Target is a is a small player. I mean, they're not the size of Walmart, but they're they're up there. I mean, they're they're not a little tiny store. So this type of growth and this type of report is just huge, absolutely right. huge. And the, uh, the you, you touched on it briefly before the digital comparable sales grew 195%. Um, the the two smart things they did. Well, one, I mean, they, they have a, obviously they have the brand name. People know, Hey, I need to go get something. They're going to go to target. They go to target.com already. Uh, so when people can't leave their house, they go, I'm going to order from target and they, they have it ready shipped on the smart thing they did is, um, just curbside pickup with, with some of the, the shopping. So this way you don't have to run into the store. You still feel safe as you can pick up the items you need. And they have a lot of the, the basic items too, that, that people just need to kind of live between medicine, between just deodorant and toothpaste and just the standard household items that you just kind of need. And target seems to be that place to go where you go in for a little thing of toothpaste and you walk out with $75 worth of purchases. So they, they do a good job of the upsells and it shows in, in these numbers. Yeah. They absolutely must have sold a ton of, to <laughs> of toilet paper yeah. <laughs> in quarter two. So they were the only ones with toilet paper on their shelves, I guess they, they, they knew it was coming. Yeah. It's just uh, again, just phenomenal, phenomenal earnings. I know that we talked a little bit about, and they did stop their buyback program, uh, as you can see here in March 25th. Uh, they suspended their share repurchase activity, but they still did pay $330 million in dividends compared with 328 of last year. So, you know, that's pretty good. Yeah, any, anybody holding long-term investments, having Target in that portfolio, I mean, an increase of 3.1% of uh, dividend per share is fantastic. It's kind of like a... A holiday for anybody that has their their account set to drip and just able to pick up more shares and everything so i all in all i mean it, it's a good feeling to to own target and i could see it uh steadily i i don't i don't see why why there's any hiccups in the road right now for for target yeah the uh, trailing 12 months through second quarter 2020 after tax return on invested capital so 
ROIC, as they call it, was 17.2% compared to 15.2% for the prior 12 months through second quarter of 2019. So, I mean, 17.2% return, that's not bad. A uh, 17.2% uh, return on your investment, pretty darn good, especially nowadays with uh, rates being super low and uh, being negative in some places in the world. So, yeah, just absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal earnings. So we see the chart. You got this massive, massive gap, uh, huge bullish candle. It was a gap and go this morning. Uh, this thing was up 12.65%. Where do you think target goes from here? And, and what would your play be on it? Tricky at all time highs. Um, I, I can see short term, just bullishness continuing, believe it or not, on, on target. Would not be surprised if, if we get a couple more days of, I mean, people, people want to put their money in secure places. Uh, right now, target is is good for me personally. I would probably wait until we get some kind of pullback. I mean, just since was that mid March, April area. I mean, it's just been a just massive run. So um, people are profitable already. There's got to be a, some certain point where it rests. When it when it definitely it, it's for me. It's a buy the dip opportunity. If I was to get in this, I, I mean, I just can't chase when it's up twelve percent today and. Previously, it's almost up 100%, uh, not quite 100%, but 85% from where somebody could have got in back in April. So um, I, I'd be watching it. I, I'm not going to be quick to purchase here, uh, but I understand why people want to ask, continuously just add it to long-term and, and um, you know grow it, grow it on a longer-term basis. Yeah, it did have a really big gap over here on earnings. It had another big gap over here on earnings. Uh, this one did fill this one didn't quite fill uh and that was that was on uh, the coronavirus the coronavirus crash there so i don't know that this gap necessarily fills all the way but i do think it fills some so i would right if i were going to invest in target it would definitely be a little bit of a longer term play and i would probably pyramid in and uh, buy a little bit at a time as it does pull back and then if we do fill this gap you know then you can get into a little bit bigger of a position, but you can see just massive, massive volume here today as well. The volume today, 40 million shares. If I go back on the daily chart, I mean, that's, was this day for around 40 million? Yeah, so a couple of these really large earnings gaps like this one that again, did not fill until the Corona crash. So without something substantial like that, I mean, maybe this gap doesn't fill. But yep. uh, yeah, I wouldn't be coming in buying first thing if, in the morning. If you already have Target, I, I, there's no reason to get rid of it and sell it. And I know there's a lot of sharks out there with with a heavy bankrolls that would be loving to kind of piece into this kind of like you said, pyramid into it a little bit. Um, that makes the most sense. Um, if there's, I, I don't see a, a certain swing set up right now on it, uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be looking for a swing possibly i mean day trade every day is a is a brand new opportunity so we'll see if there's something for that but on a longer term basis i mean buy the dip makes tons of sense for me yeah this was one that like if you go to a weekly chart there it kind of channeled for a, a while and then back over here and was a september of 2019 it really broke out very nicely retested that breakout almost perfectly and then has had this run up so yeah, longer term, maybe we do get a, a retest down into this 130 area. And that for sure would be a, a buy the dip on target. The other thing, just anecdotally, I haven't been in their stores that recently. Like pre-corona, I had gone in uh, just because I wanted to see what they looked like when this huge gap happened over here. And they are actually a lot cleaner than they used to be. I don't remember target being super clean. And uh, the one that I was in was definitely remodeled uh, here in uh, Boise, Idaho. So it was remodeled. It looked nice, had a nice feel to it. You know, I'm not a, a Target shopper a lot per se, but it definitely was cleaner than I remembered. So I think they've done some work on cleaning up the stores as well. Yeah, I've, I've shopped in Target. I, I, I don't mind it. I got no negative anything to say about Target. I just don't get it. Like they, they their fan club is so dedicated to target like that they, they they know this is the place to go and they, they hit you with that little dollar aisle right when you come in and fill up your basket with a bunch of stuff that you never even knew you needed and then um but yeah so o overall I, I mean any anything with a fan base like target has and i know they have some very dedicated 
uh, customers and client base, it, it's it's easier to get on board with something like that. Yeah, they definitely have uh, some brand loyalty. So uh, the one thing I was looking for was guidance. During the first quarter, the company withdrew its guidance. So uh, they haven't put out any guidance, which I think is actually responsible because if they had guidance and then for whatever reason had to lower it, uh, the stock would probably take a hit. So I like the fact that they just withdrew guidance and they'll just let each quarter speak for itself. So let's pop on over to NVIDIA reported, um, what, about an hour and a half ago or so? And uh, maybe Very two, recent, yep. Yeah, maybe two hours ago. And NVIDIA uh, with a absolute killer, killer quarter. Uh, talk to us a little bit about NVIDIA here. Yeah, so as far as NVIDIA, I mean, NVIDIA in general, large market cap, um, income is, is pretty solid. They're, they're doing $3.32 billion in, in actual income. Their sales, $11.78 billion. That's just a regular market cap. Um, when you get down to the earnings report here for what came out, uh, strong beat. I mean, the... The stocks itself is not reflecting the beat, but you, you got record revenue of 3.87 billion. It's up 50% from the year earlier. Uh, you have record data center revenue of 1.75 billion. It's up 167% of the previous year. Um, and then they did have the, uh, I believe they acquired Mellanox and that's going into a lot of their, their numbers as well. So um, the growth, accelerated in its first quarter as part of NVIDIA contributed uh, 14% of revenue. So overall, I mean, the numbers are strong. I mean, there's, there's nothing to not like about the actual report. The stocks are different than, than the numbers. So I know after hours, NVIDIA, they put out these numbers and they taken a little bit of a heat a hit, but I mean, just a run up on NVIDIA previously, um, it's 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 one of those things where you get the good news and it's just not even it's if it falls in with what you're expecting that's bad <laughs> that's that's what it seems like yeah i don't think that no matter how good their earnings were i don't think it was going to do a whole lot uh right. it was priced in for about a cuz i was looking at some options uh this morning it was priced in for about a 33 dollar move um, and this is going, it looks like it's going to be less than that unless something, you know, massive happens, but right now down about seven bucks. So options buyers getting absolutely crushed on earnings, um, as they often are because there's just so much implied volatility, um, killer, killer report from an NVIDIA. But as you said, they just, they've ran up so far. I mean, this was just at 400 went all the way up to 500 within a couple weeks. But I really do love this data center beat. I think this is a huge growth area, an opportunity for them to continue to grow. I don't personally know a lot about Mellanox, uh, but they contributed 14% to the revenue. So that's cool. And the data center actually produced more revenue than their gaming sector, which was um, pretty surprising. That's the first time in history that, uh, that that has happened. So this is their... Um, their NVIDIA A100 powered systems tackle the most complex challenges in artificial intelligence, data science, and scientific computing. So a lot of exciting stuff around their data data center. I know their gaming is hot. I mean, I just recently built a new computer, the one that I'm using right now, and it's hard to find the graphics card that you want, at least, you know, on Amazon, you know, a lot of things are out of stock or there's a lot of people that are, marking them up and trying to sell them secondhand because they're out of stock with the regular suppliers or on new egg. You might not be able to get the one that the one that you really want. So with everybody home, whether it's working from home, kids at home, you know, from school, they're doing a lot of gaming and you really have got to have an NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, AMD graphics card have came a little, a little ways, but the NVIDIA just, hands down a much better graphics card. If you do any type of video encoding or streaming, there's a separate chip on the NVIDIA graphics cards to do like video encoding called their NVENC processing or their NVENC uh, processing processor. And that thing is just fantastic. I mean, that's, that's the go-to. So I know that gaming has been hot and if data center is going to beat that, then that's huge. 
Their revenue is up 24% um, from the previous quarter, 26% year over year on uh, the gaming sector. And then uh, this automotive one is pretty interesting. What do you think about this? Yeah, they, they just had the partnership with uh, Mercedes-Benz. Um, I, I'm not too familiar exactly how much revenue that would bring in or what exactly acts, aspect that they are uh, partnering with. I don't know if you know more about the actual deal itself of, of what kind of services they're providing to them. I don't specifically, the uh, outside of the fact that I know they're providing processing power for the artificial intelligence for uh, self-driving, so the AV, autonomous driving software, uh, they previously, NVIDIA, made the chips that went into Tesla. Now, Tesla stopped using NVIDIA and made their own chips, I think, to obviously protect some proprietary information that NVIDIA probably would have needed to use, and even though they could have used NDAs and all that other stuff, um, kind of like Apple does, you know, where they make their own chips instead of using someone else. I think Tesla wanted to bring that in house, but Nvidia already has some experience doing that with some of the self-driving and, uh, things like that and the AI for vehicles. And so partnering with Mercedes Benz, I mean, that, that's good for Mercedes Benz because Nvidia is already doing some of that. And we know with the excitement around electric vehicles, I'm sure that Mercedes is not going to want to be left behind. And they're going to be putting the, the pedal to the metal, so to speak, around uh, self-driving and autonomous software. So, yeah, really uh, cool the stuff. One, the one thing that I think is a little bit of a concern is that it is down $111 million in the automotive field. Um, I, I Again, I think a lot of that could be due to just the times that we're in right now. So you're down 20%, uh, 28% from the previous quarter and down 47%. Um, so while that could be a little concerning, it could also be a little bit of an opportunity to say, um, you know, this, the company could continue to grow bigger if the con if the economy itself starts to recover, if people are, um, going back to work, they have money coming in, they're looking for new cars. They need to travel when everybody shut down. I, I would imagine it's pretty tough to sell a car to, to, to anybody, unless you're Elon Musk, then, then you have no problem. But, um, the, I could see that that being a little bit of a downer for for Nvidia for now, but uh, probably could flip it to an opportunity in the future. Yeah, I think that also might be last year. They probably had still some Tesla revenue in there right. from them, and now it's obviously gone, and so they're switching over with uh, Mercedes Benz. But with Nvidia at like a, almost a three hundred billion market cap, it's still a very very small piece. You can see just really strong revenue growth. Um, their net income per share, you know, two, this is the first six months of, uh, 2020, $2.5 per share last year, the first six months, one point, um, 1.5. So dollar 56 per share. So just really, really nice. They got plenty of cash on hand. Uh, they do have some debt out there, but it's not massive. So that's a good thing because we know that it is a growth company and growth companies are going to take on debt. In order to grow, it is providing some cash flow. And yeah, I, I think it looks good. As far as a setup on the stock, what do you think, NVIDIA, from here? So, I mean, obviously, after hours, I mean, we get the luxury of, of being able to get a little bit of movement after hours on NVIDIA just to see kind of where, where people's heads are at. Um, to me, obviously, you know, just going through the earnings report, strong company. Um, like I said, they, they do have some future opportunities and things like that. The run up that it's had again, I mean, since this one probably started a little sooner, maybe even uh, mid March area, just, just a massive run. I mean, if you just took, if you bought 10 shares of NVIDIA back in March and forgot that you own them, you're sitting there pretty happy today. So everybody's profitable. Nobody's getting beat up from it. You, you really need some kind of just outstanding report numbers, uh, like just blow it away like Target did, um, just to just to get this thing to move a little bit higher. I, I think it needs to rest. I, I think it would be good if we could get some kind of pullback um, and then probably set some kind of uh, possible entries, and, and I totally get taking something like that long for a future play. Yeah, up 177, almost 178% from the uh... – peak the trough from the Corona crash all the way up to uh, the high just above 500 the other day. I definitely think this gap fills uh, this retest gap from the other day. 
down around 468. So if you wanted to nibble a little bit there, or uh, I think an e this hasn't touched the 50 since, uh, <laughs> what is this, April 3rd? So trying to buy off the 50 exponential, like down around, you know, depending on when it comes down there, it'll probably creep higher. But maybe down around 420, you know, you got have, looks like a little bit of this double bottom here. Could retest this neckline 420 to 430 might be a good place to snag some if it pulls back that far. I think it probably could, but with this market, with how crazy it's been, who knows? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, SPY is pushing all-time highs. Why not NVIDIA keep going? <laughs> it's it's a very bizarre half the economy still shut down people are trying to figure out how to survive in business and, and market itself is ripping uh why not nvidia wouldn't be a surprise to me at all if it continues higher but for me to get in i mean if you want to play smart money you gotta wait for some kind of retracement um for for sure before i want to get into nvidia so we'll see how the next couple of days do see if it pre presents us with any opportunities so today's wednesday we got two more days this week and kind of see what it does next week give it some time after the earnings report let things settle in but i mean just phenomenal company i, I if you're thinking of adding it to the long term nvidia is going to be around 10 years so it's not not an issue on that it's just where you get in for your for your pricing to to start to piece in and you probably do a little bit of a pyramid buying as well just to kind of build out that position as, as time goes on Yep. Well said. Well said. Well, that wraps up our third edition of the earnings report. Once again, I'm Robert Falco from Real Life Trading with Dan Jansen. You guys have been absolutely incredible. We cannot wait to go over some more future earnings with you guys on the very next video. All right. See you next time.